IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everybody, it's Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. I'm coming to you from Vegas for Black Hat 2012, and I'm here speaking with Ralph Echimundia. He is one of Secure Ninja's favorite instructors, awesome hacker, and he recently became a hacker consultant on the new Savages film, which is a film by Oliver Stone, and he also played an acting role in the movie. So Ralph, what I'm wondering is how do you go from being an instructor to being an actor and a hacker consultant on a film? I don't know. No, I'm okay. I'm, <laughs> I, I really don't know, but I can tell you how, uh, how it kind of came about. Um, basically, I was in L.A. and I've been doing a lot of work in L.A. for the entertainment industry, and uh, through one of, uh, one of the folks that I knew, um, I happened to bump into uh, their meeting, which was actually uh, months before Savages was, began filming. And it um, turns out that that person who th they were kind of meeting with was the art director who's responsible for all of the set design and all that. And uh, eventually we got talking and he said, hey, I really need your help on set design for this hacker scene, uh, which uh, certainly would be something that I was, I was just very happy to be able to help with, since Hollywood never seems to get it right. Um, and then, um, also with regards to things in the in the um, in the story itself, as far as changing some of the lines around to make it more realistic, um, so that we're not just using the same words that Hollywood seems to use. Um, so it was it was a, a very interesting process. Uh, that uh, again is just kind of I guess being at the right place at the right time to some degree, but. Uh, but that's kind of how it happened. So next thing you know, uh, I was being called in by Oliver Stone to meet with him and talk about what um, what this Savages movie was about. Because up at the, the, that point, I had, I had no idea what it was about, mm -hmm. um, and um, it was uh, rather interesting to be sitting with him, and uh, it was kind of being interrogated to some degree by him on a lot of things surrounding hacking issues and the hacking world and the hacking culture and. Um, both the side, both the professional side of it and the underground side of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and eventually at one point I was like, "What am I doing here? Well, why did you call me? I'll be on this." And he said, "Oh, we really need your help with this movie," and gave me this whole great um, little speech um, that um, just just kind of getting me involved in the film and wanting me involved in the film. And uh, it was kind of funny after him spending a couple of minutes uh, telling me all these great things. I was like. You didn't have to even try. I mean, you had me a hello. I would have said <laughs> yes anyway. So it was cool. It was very cool. Um, and that was about two or three months before the filming began, mm -hmm. um, which allowed me to work with all the set design folks, all the art department, to build this set, which uh, was kind of, if you could create the uh, you know ultimate hacker layer, what would it be? And and it was uh, it was great for these guys to be able to build it, and it really came out great. Everybody was very happy with it. Um, and as well as, you know, changing all these lines around and all that kind of stuff that made it, I think, more realistic. We had, you know, badges from DEF CON flown in and things like that that were real mm -hmm. to put it on set. Uh, Oliver was a stickler for having that reality in the set and explained uh, that it was very important for the actors to also really get into character by having real things around them. Since right. They're not really hackers. So. What sort of real visual elements did you were you able to bring in besides the DEFCON badges? Well, um, we we basically went over a number of different pictures uh, on the set, and I think I have some okay. of them here. Show us, please. So um, this is the hacker layer. This is the hacker layer nice. of the movie, um, and this is actually a second floor in a building in Santa Monica where we shot this, and it was kind of cool because it had this like look like you're inside of an airplane type hangar thing. Uh, and there was just one office on the second floor, the, just that one yellow room that you see, and it was all bare. So part of it was to make it look like it was sort of a data center. Um, and so, you know, you see servers and cabling and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that, all of that they put in. Um, and we sat down, I was showing pictures of what, what a data center looked like, took them on tours of a couple of different places. Uh, and then from that, they took a lot of pictures and then they would recreate it. It was fascinating. They'll take a picture of this room in both directions, and then they'll paint in everything else to have people just literally draw in right. everything before they actually do it, and then they go in and actually do it. And so a lot of the a lot of that stuff, just as far as the look, and then a lot of the stickers on the wall mm -hmm. had to do more with you know bringing some of the hacker culture from the DEF CON side of things 
and here you can see pH neutral, which is a sort of elite type of conference in Germany that this group Phenolit puts on, and um, the ha Ghetto Hackers logos were all over the place, and you know the use of um, lock picks and keys and stuff like that that we brought in. I think here's another one. Um, you know, you can see some of the logos mm -hmm. in there, and to my knowledge, it's the first time that um, anything from the hacker world was really featured in a movie, right. even if it's just uh, as far as logos and placement. Real stuff. Uh, which is kind of funny, too, in dealing with Universal Studios when they're like, okay, who's the dark tangent and how do we get a hold of him for legal <laughs> approval? Um, and is, is there such a thing as a dark tangent? I don't know. Um, so it was kind of interesting to go through all of that different process. And then we began filming. Uh, I think there's a couple more. They loved uh, you know, seeing some of the sayings and that's actually my t-shirt he's wearing. It says, I read your email. Nice. And um, they love the social engineering um, little saying, because there's no patch for human stupidity. <laughs> um, they love that. They made a whole poster about it. I actually got to keep this. Cool. Um, goes on the entire, takes up the entire wall. But it was kind of cool to uh, see the lock pick sets and locks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All, all stuff that kind of really comes from the culture. Um, and it was it was really kind of cool. I think I uh, have one more. Yeah. So, like here you have oh. all the DefCon was underneath all of the monitors, and you even have some Ninja Tune poster, which is a music. Uh, it's a label out of the UK, but the, all the hackers recognize those sort of things, and we're like, oh, check it out. There's this here, and there's this there, and so, and like I said, there's badges laying around, and a bunch of stuff that was just um, that was just real and you know helped to get all these characters to some degree and yeah. into the, into that world and, uh, and it was fun. Definitely. Was really fun. Are these real computer systems or what, what operating system is? Well the interesting thing is for the most part they're not allowed to use a real operating system without I'm sure there's some legal or financial implications. Right. So so what we did is I worked with one of the guys who um, basically designed screens and most of these screens are are, are built off of Linux stuff, basically that you know, Linux screens and mm -hmm. tools um, to look like them, um, but they're actually all, all written in Flash. All of this stuff is okay. mostly Flash, and uh, you know the guy stands to the side, and then when they hit action, then he hits a button, and all the screens start doing right. what it looks like they're Just working. Just animation. Neat. Yeah, so they're all really mostly animations, um, but yeah, I worked a lot with them to make sure that they at least looked like the tools we used and so on, even if they weren't using the exact same thing. Right. So it was cool. So you clearly contributed to the visual um, side of the film, but you also did some of the work on the script, correcting yeah, yeah. terminology and... Yeah, it was funny. I was just like, I just sat with Oliver and I, uh, during that first meeting, and said, hey, hey um, we would, ne I would never say that. I'm not sure who wrote that. And he said, well, uh, I'm sorry, I wrote it. I don't really know what I'm talking yeah. about. And I was like... Oh, oops. oops! Did I just tell him he Albert. doesn't know what he's writing? And he clearly said, came out and said, oh, "I don't know what I'm talking about." Mm -hmm. You know, that's so. What would you say? And so we went through and changed some of the lines there. There's also another character, Spin, who's sort of the <coughs> financial model, money money laundering type of guy for them. Um, so he's sort of the hacker meets the Wall Street financial analyst type guy, and um, there was a lot of that with him too to make sure that. In his character, and what he was doing was somewhat realistic. You know, you can't exactly move ten million dollars in twenty-four hours. You right. Know, it's it's um, so all, all of those little nuances. It was it was a lot of fun to to really see these changes actually take place in the script, and then watch the entire process of I it. Bet. it Your very, vision came to life. It was very cool. That's Hollywood. It, it, was, it was very cool. Now, in addition to you being a hacker consultant, you also played a small role in the film. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I'm not sh sure how that happened, but yes, uh, Oliver ended up asking me to uh, play the role of, uh, originally it was this uh, Paul character, which is supposed to be, it's a sound guy, it's a sound engineer who's friends with two of the main characters, and so he's sort of uh, bugging or listening in on conversations that they're having with the cartel. Um, the, my name was later changed to Wiley, which uh, actually, a little background there, the uh, owner of the sound company who provides all the sound equipment to Hollywood's name is Wiley. And he came on set a couple of times, and so he's a friend of Oliver's and myself, and that's why I got changed to Wiley. So it would be sort of an insider type of thing. On it's Wiley. Um, 
of course I'm much better looking than Wiley, but um, but yeah, I got to play this uh, little uh, part, um, which is kind of interesting because I got introduced about I think 30 minutes into the movie uh, while they're doing this meeting with the cartel, and I've had a lot of people call me and be like, "Oh, we saw you in the movie. That's a really cool scope you got there," and the whole thing's a prop, but uh, right. it looks the realistic. Do you have photos? Um, of yeah, I think I do. Um, Let's see, I have a couple of photos. So this is back to the hacker set. Cool. And like that. That's that Wiley. That's Wiley. There you go. It's not me, it's Wiley. And you were a sound engineer. Yeah, so um, basically this little part, uh, I don't really say anything, but um, Blake Lively, who's kind of narrating the whole story in the film, uh, talks about how Wiley's a sound expert who only mixes for the biggest bands. and. Um, and uh, how he only loves sound and Ben and Chong's Primo, which is the guys from the movie. And uh, it was very cool for, this was something that took probably three or four hours to, to film um, and ends up being 15 seconds or so in the right. movie. So it's quite the process. Um, but it was fun. It was fun. Uh, it was definitely fun to do. Um, uh, I'm more prouder of the stuff in the hacker set because it was like a lot more of me in there. Right. Even though it wasn't me in there. Right. But there's a lot more Your of me in there. spirit was in there. Exactly. Absolutely. But with this, it was just kind of fun to do. Um, there's another set, there's another scene there where you just see my hands bugging a phone and things like that. But cool. um, it was kind of fun. Uh, not the most natural thing to do, though. Right. Um, to sit there and wait for a while and get everything set up. And then lights are uh, literally right there when that was shot. There's a couple of bright lights underneath on my crotch there's a light on the top <laughs> i'm not allowed to do it this way i have to make sure it's done this way and right. it's this very Angles. unnatural thing but it looks just right when they shoot it so right. um but yeah that was a, that was a, another part of it that was a lot of fun i mean i think it was a total of 48 days of shooting wow. and i was there for at least 42 of those days so wow. it was uh, a lot of fun even for stuff that i wasn't necessarily involved in i just wanted to uh further uh, explore exactly what the process is. Definitely. Uh, yeah, so it was great. Yeah, definitely. It was great for Secure Ninja because there has been a course that was born out of this whole tie you have with Savages, and that's the Certified Ethical Hacker course. Yeah. And you will be starring in the course, so you'll be <laughs> the instructor. Yeah, not just a cameo. Yeah, um, yeah, it's okay, a cameo, which is but, awesome. Yeah, no, but it was, it's, uh, It'll be great. I think the the other guys, uh, the other instructors are two of my favorite people in the world, and mm -hmm. um, I think one of my favorite instructors, Larry Greenblatt, uh, will be team teaching this with myself and um, and another great instructor. So I mean, between the three of us, I think it's going to be a great, great class. Um, yeah. It'll bring. It'll be very different than a typical CEH right. class. So, um, which is fun. Right, and hopefully, films like Savages will inspire people who might want to get into hacking to, you know, take that step and take Absolutely, like absolutely, CH. absolutely. Um, if they look to make a profession out of it, absolutely, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now, I'm curious, what was your original inspiration for getting into hacking? Uh, for me, it really kind of started uh, when I was 14 with ham radio. A friend of mine kind of got me into you know, understanding ham radio and using ham radio, and uh, it really kind of started there, and then uh, shortly after that, it was phone freaking came around, and uh, that was of interest. Uh, and then shortly after that, it was get a computer so we can make the most out of the phone freaking stuff that we know. Um, and you know, back in those days, it was you know a lot of it you had to kind of learn yourself and mm -hmm. um, and sort of make those connections with people very much. Uh, you know, I would say underground, but it's not even that. It's just it was a different world. There was no internet or anything like that. There's no Google to Google anything. Right. Um, so. It was kind of an organic process, I don't know. Um, it just made sense to me, and, uh, and it was fun. And at the same time, it was, uh, it was before any laws were in place, it was a bit mischievous, the, th nice. the type of things we could do. So, um, so you know, it, it kind of started there. And then um, over the years, I don't really think that I knew that I had that, that was a skill that would end up turning into a career. Uh, but it did, um, and when I first um, started going for a job, it was uh, as a secretary, my first job. Right. And that was because I knew how to use WordPerfect on DOS. And, nice. And uh, this is around the time word processors were coming in and the typewriter was going out. And so um, it turned out that the f that company I worked for used to handle IBM and Lexmark and public PR for them. So 
um, that's what all of a sudden opened up the whole IT world in a way. Um, and I would be walking into these organizations that, you know, Oracle, I worked there for a while, and um, it was amazing what I could get away with, and they had no idea you could do that, and so they were, I, they thought it was magic. Yeah. And, uh, and so it started there. I don't think there was even a security position with right. any of these companies at the time. There was no firewalls. There was no, none of that kind of stuff. So it was, it was a wild west, uh, still is, but, you know, just a little different. I guess so. You've evolved with the times. Yeah, kind absolutely. You have to. You have to in this uh, field. Everything's just changing so fast. Like so. Do you have any more pictures you want to show us? Oh yeah, sure. So there's a couple more here. I'm on set there with cool. the. Here I am with one of the main actors. Um, this was over at the party. Here is with Oliver at the party. I think there's one more over here with Oliver before. This is at the red carpet premiere. Uh, this was actually the last day of shooting. So we all look uh, a bit beat up here. <laughs> um, and in fact, at the last day of shooting, we all got our little crew shirt. Which is, I survived all of nice. this stuff. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think there's, uh, this is kind of a funny one. Um, what, what without telling this? you too much about the movie, <laughs> but the, the movie has a lot, a lot of it underlying is about <clears throat> the marijuana trade in California and Mexico. And uh, so this was on the set uh, one of the main sets for a uh, girl house scene. So this is actually a house that they, uh, the guy Tomas Voth, who was the art director, uh, or production designer, had this great idea with taking an indoor pool and they took all the water out of the indoor pool, lifted the, the floor, sort of made it so that it was higher, and then the inside of the pool was a grow oh, operation, and also all the way around. It was very cool. Um, but uh, all these plants, and they took a lot of time to make them look realistic, misting them, painting them by hand. So they're not, they're but not real. No, they're, they're all real. fake. The whole thing's fake. Most of the other, the gear around them is all real, like all the lighting and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff that they used. They brought in another guy, um, Rob, from 420 Magazine, who did all of that and provided all the lighting and all the chemicals and all that other right. stuff. But he was the, the weed consultant. No, there was actually, okay. he was more like product placement. Okay. Because uh, he was able to get a lot of that, the gear for, for, for them, you know, for a lot of the, from a lot of the suppliers and such. And then uh, there was another gentleman who was the, uh, I think what the title was, <laughs> special botany consultant. <laughs> and um, Patrick, um, and Patrick was the one that had a lot to do with just the, more that the look of this stuff was realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he is in reality in that industry so um but this was quite a quite a set let me tell you out of all of the sets uh including the hacker set you know most of the crew is very used to working 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 and mm -hmm. no matter where the set is you rarely see the crew taking pictures of themselves with right. the set this set <laughs> everybody took pictures yeah. with so it was very very funny um yeah, and I think that's just about it as far as some of the pictures I have here. Cool. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see the film and check yeah, it out. Yeah, check it. it out. Check it out and, uh, you know, check out, like I said, specifically those scenes and uh, yes. you know, hopefully see what I saw as far as, uh, you know, making it, again, realistic and bringing, like I said, some of the real culture, uh, the hacker culture into it. Right. Now, you are here um, with us at DEF CON. DEF CON Black Hat ends today. DEF CON starts tomorrow. Yep. What do you think the uh, real hackers at DEF CON will think about the film? I think what they'll like can? it. I've already heard very good positive feedback um, from quite a few of them. Um, and I think they'll like it. And in fact, um, uh, sort of a, we'll have a bit of a surprise uh, visit from Oliver. He's coming out to DEF CON. Uh, um, to kind of better understand the hacker culture. I think he, um, we have talked about the possibility or potential uh, aspects of a project that, that, that um, a movie project that may uh, touch more and more on mm -hmm. um, the culture side of, of the hacker movement versus not so much the security professional as much as the hacker movement. Uh, you know, he has a lot of interest in you know, all these different things that have been happening, you know, mm -hmm. with Anonymous and uh, the likes of other groups like Occupy and how that all potentially, what that all means and what could happen. He's very good at, uh, you know, what if, but 
it's not a crazy what if, it's actually something that you can potentially see happening in the it's future. It's a reality, yeah. Yeah, so, so he's going to be joining me um, out here and, you know, a uh, few of the ninjas, hopefully you'll be here. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we'll get to walk him around and introduce him to a number of people. He'll be uh, meeting with uh, Jeff Moss with the Dark Tangents who started DEF CON and Black Cat, mm -hmm. as well as Caesar and a few a number of other friends from all over the world to get a better feel for what makes us tick and, and, and you know, there's definitely some controversial subject matter on, on right. you know, everything from piracy to, you know, privacy. So mm -hmm. um, he's very interested in that and uh, I think he'll, he's going to have a great time and I think he's yeah. going to learn a lot and, yeah. um, and it'll be, uh, you know, uh, DEF CON is definitely uh, an animal like no other. Yeah. Um, and you'll see, um, it's just very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, Kind of crazy that it's uh, going on 20 years now. I know, right? Well, this yeah. is my first DEF CON. I'm looking oh, yeah? forward to learning about the hacker culture as well. You, I think right there be, with Oliver. You'll definitely be surprised. And um, this is my uh, my first was DEF CON six, so <laughs> that was when I was 12. Yes, um, but uh, <laughs> it's come but, a yeah. long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be fun. Always, uh, always fun. It's kind of a big family in a way. Yeah. And this is the, the one time of the year that we all see each other mm -hmm. uh, from all over the world. And this is probably the first, the uh, DEF CON is also the place where we tend to first meet each other after probably knowing each other for 15 years but never meeting each other. Right. We all know each other from online circles. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a good weekend. Uh, and it's going to be a bit different than anything mm -hmm. you've ever seen before. Definitely. Yeah. Well, we're so excited about the Cyber Savages course with you, Larry Greenblatt, and Tom Updegrove. Um, if somebody wants to learn more about the course, what can they do? They can go online to uh, secureninja.com slash savages. Okay. Uh, that has all the information about it. Like I said, I think uh, this is going to be a really special class um, because, again, Larry's a, a great instructor and Tom as well. Um, both those guys have a, a huge background in, in martial arts and have a very interesting way of, of correlating that into the cyber world. Cool. Um, which is really cool, and uh, you know Tom especially is, is you know actually uh, Larry trained under Tom for many years, and uh, both guys are very knowledgeable both in the IT side. But I learn from them every time because of the way that they they tend to kind of uh, uh, bring some of that physical side of the world into and put it in terms that apply to the hacking world. So uh, it's going to be a great class to to do with these guys, and it's going to be a lot of fun again. SecureNinja.com slash savages. Awesome. Yeah, and actually the course includes a signed copy of the DVD Savages and yep. an iPad. Yep. Can't that's go right. wrong with that. That's right. And actually on the DVD, um, there's an entire behind the scenes interview with me and all that kind of stuff. So it'll Excellent. be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great time and uh, a much better way to, to get information across to students than uh, you know, just a standard book, right? Um, because we, we're going to be bringing a lot of reality into it as far as storytelling, which is very important with these type of classes to really put it in, in context to what it is that you're doing. Um, um, so I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Awesome. I'm sure um, anyone who takes it will have a great time doing absolutely. so, too. Absolutely. I hope to see you there, too. Hopefully. Maybe <laughs> I'll become a certified ethical hacker. Hey, that might be dangerous. I know. I would be dangerous. <laughs> I'm already a ninja. That's right. So. Well, Ralph, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank we you appreciate for having me here. it. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Definitely. Enjoy DEF CON. I will as well. I think we'll have a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts. Yeah!